The name is Evaluating Wildland Surfaces Wells for Potential Prescribed Fires in the Netherlands. Yeah, number six, yeah. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Nienke Brouwer, so I'm not Brian Oswald. <laughs> um, and uh, thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, I'd like to tell you something about wildfires in the Netherlands, cause, or also Holland, because uh, we're really well known for uh, water and flooding. And if I tell people that I'm working on wildfires and that I'm from the Netherlands, they're sometimes kind of confused. Um, but even we have wildfires, they happen every year and uh, a way smaller scale than, uh, for example, in America or Australia, but because we have a really big wildland urban interface, uh, even small wildfires can cause major issues. And I have a small example of the Rim Fire in California versus a fire we had at uh, our most well-known area. Um, so you can see uh, it, it's nothing to com compare with, but um, even for us, that's, that size uh, can cause trouble. Um, so we started to develop a wildfire spread model uh, since 2012. And this model is used throughout the whole uh, safety chain system, uh, from risk management uh, to wildfire prevention measurements, uh, suppression, but also evaluation. It's been used by the fire department as well uh, for landowners, uh, so they know what kind of fuel they have in their area and what they can do about it. Um, the wildfire spread model needs uh, meteor data, so wind speed, wind direction, uh, humidity, rainfall, um, and topography, uh, but also vegetation or uh, fuel data. And for the last one, uh, we've been uh, doing some fuel research also since 2012 um, in different vegetation types that we have uh, in Holland. Um, so we started in 2012 with uh, header fields because uh, most wildfires we have happen in grassland and header fields, uh, mostly in the, in the dry area, so uh, sandy grounds, but also in dune area, peat area, in forest, and forest not just the understory, but also for crown fires. Um, so all this data we're using um, to build up our wildfire spread model to get more and more data and more um, uh, better simulation. So these are a couple of examples of fuel models or how the vegetation looks like in the Netherlands. Um, and now we're at the point that we have a lot of data um, and we are now trying with remote sensing to create a wildfire fuel map. Um, and this map will help us uh, to create more detailed information um, for the whole of the Netherlands. So we don't need to see each area differently because we have a lot of different landowners. Uh, each landowner has its own uh, way to map their area. So that's not really helpful to create a system for the whole Netherlands. So that's why we're using remote sensing data uh, to create more detailed uh, simulation. Um, yeah, and then the prescribed burning or prescribed fires, because um, we've been building up uh, all this information and, and because it's used throughout the whole system. Uh, it started to be used during wildfires um, for the fire department so they get more information where the wildfire is going and so they know where to um, to be at the right moment. Um, but now it's slowly changing to, um, I think what we've been talking about all day so far, it's a little mindset that's changing that we don't have to be only when there is a wildfire, but we can also do something in forehand. Um, so if they've been doing that for years at military areas, because they have to, that's the only management uh, they can do, due to all the, um, well, it's the dangerous area, so the, um, how to say it, um, the munition on the ground. Um, but now it's also used in uh, other wildland areas or nature areas um, as a management uh, part, because it's been used um, like decades ago, um, but it's kind of changed, because um, like in the 80s, 90s, they stopped using it, but now it's slowly coming back. Um, and together with the landowners and the fire department, they're trying to build training and to get more experience and they can use the wildfire spread model um, 
to use it uh, for doing the training to see where's the wildfire going, what kind of vegetation is behaving uh, different ways. Um, besides the collaborative burning, um, they also use it now for the tactical burnings. Uh, this project started last year and they're trying to see if they can use uh, fire to uh, stop fire. To um, not just in forehand, uh, like during winter time, to uh, reduce the fuel, but also during a wildfire, what can we do to stop it? Um, so they started last year because um, it's also to do with the law and it's not just something because it's also not a mindset. It's weird for the public to see that the fire department is using fire to stop fire. Um, so it's not a mindset that has to change. Um, but it, the outcome of the project was really positive and they uh, want to use it to do for uh, grass and header fields. And it's also a bit, yeah, the awareness for the public uh, to get accepted. And, but they're slowly, step by step, getting further uh, in the progress. Um, so that, that's really great that um, fire can be used to stop fire, and, but also in four and to reduce the fuel. So even in the Netherlands, a country where you think uh, water is an issue, even wildfires uh, are slowly um, accepted. So that was a short brief of what we've done so far. Um, on prescribed burning in the Netherlands, are there any questions? Yes. Very interesting. I think it's a major undertaking what you are doing with few fires, because modeling usually is uh, very much difficult when you have fewer uh, issues to test. Uh, I have a, a question, a specific question you mentioned that you have crowning fires in 2016 and even uh, spotting fires. Can you give us a dimension of those? Um, well, we didn't have actually crown fires in 2016, but we did fuel research uh, for the crown fire. So uh, the model can use that data to see when, um, when there is a chance on a crown fire. So um, luckily we don't have a lot of crown fires. Uh, I think the last 50 years, I think we had like three of them. So luckily that's not a real big issue for us. It's more the header fields and the grasslands. Thank you. Who is, who is using the fire? Is it just firefighters and fire professionals, or is it citizens, farmers, ranchers? Uh, you mean the, the prescribed fires? For the prescribed yeah. fires. Uh, it's been used by the, mostly by the landowners, but then the, the bigger ones, so the state forest service uh, and companies like that. But they're always doing it um, in cooperation with the fire department, because um, they have to keep it safe. Um, and if you show the, the people, the public, that your the fire department is there doing a prescribed burning, they know it's safe. Um, even though sometimes they don't do anything, but it's just um, to let people know, that, to show them that we know what we're doing. Um, and the fire department can use it also for training um, while there is a burning. So it has a double um, effect. Thank you. More questions? I have, I have a question for you. What is the aim of uh, burning headlands in, in Netherlands? Is it for grazing or No, it's for um, or? mainly it's been used for the header fields uh, for maintenance. Because um, if you don't do anything, they will start to develop into forest. And um, the landowners want to stop that. They just want to keep the header. Uh, so it's um, for them now as well to see what the effects are of burning uh, and what to do, have to do more to um, keep the header a header field. So sometimes it's in um, together with grazing in, indeed. So they start burning and then sheep and... So it's just for stopping evolution to forest? Yeah, because... Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other question? So it's, if it's no more questions, we move to the following 
contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you.